Okay, number 47. Hey, look, this problem here, shh. This problem here is red. You guys know the, the color coding? Red problems are supposed to be hard, although I, don't, I really don't think this problem is worthy of the red code. Red is like, like, like fire. It's like hot. It's gonna make your. It's gonna set your brain on fire. But really, I don't think that this should be like a blue one. The black problems are easy. Blue or medium. Red is hard. This should be a blue. Okay. Uh, so we have this 80 kilogram skydiver. So here he is up here in the balloon. Um, the mass of this guy, m, is 80 kilograms. Shh. His velocity when he first jumps is zero. He jumps from rest. Uh, okay, he starts at an altitude of 1,000 meters, and he opens the parachute when he's at an altitude of 200. So I broke this 1,000. This 1,000 gets broken up into 800 and 200. And then we're told, assume that the total retarding force, so that's like a frictional force. What do we know about frictional forces? They are opposite motion. So he jumps out of this balloon, and as he falls, we have mg down, which is the force of gravity, and then the retarding force, which is like a frictional force, its opposite is motion. So for the first 800 meters, the frictional force is 50 newtons, and then for the last 200 meters, the frictional force is 3600. Okay, so we have two different frictional retarding forces. Now, Question A, so in fact for right now, I'm, I'm even gonna delete, I'm gonna delete this just so I have more room. We're focusing on question A. Um, so here's the idea for chapter five. Mechanical energy at the beginning of a problem plus or minus any work done by a non-conservative force, any force other than gravity or spring, uh, that's gonna equal mechanical final. Right now, this problem is tricky because work non-conservative is two parts. Why is it two parts? Well, we have this frictional force for the first part, and then we have this frictional force for the second part. Right? Are those forces conservative or non-conservative? Non-conservative. Hey, are these frictional forces going to be adding mechanical energy or removing? Removing. So we're going to make this minus. Okay, so I'm going to write this out again. Mechanical initial minus the work, uh, what should we call this guy? Uh, work non-conservative one. So we'll call this minus work one, minus work two, right? What are these W's here? The work of that guy and the work of that guy, right? This guy here is going to be work one. This guy here is going to be work two. All right, and then this is going to equal mechanical final. Now, how many types of mechanical energy do we have? Three. I'm being totally complete here. So this is three things. So you're going to go kinetic initial plus gravity initial plus spring initial minus the work non-conservative one minus work non-conservative two. And then that's going to be kinetic final, gravity final, Spring final. Okay, does this problem have any springs? No. Nope, so cross the spring energy out. Uh, where's the zero point going to be? Put the zero point at the lowest point in the problem. Where's the lowest point in the problem here? Ground. The ground. So I'm going to put a red line down here. That red line, this red line is our H equals zero. That's the zero point. Okay, so. Does he start with gravity initial, potential of gravity? Yes. Yeah, up here when he's in the balloon, he's got a lot of potential energy. He's way above the ground. Does he start with any kinetic? No, because no, he's at rest. All right, then he jumps out of the balloon. He fall, 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 falls. Now, right before he hits the ground, does he have kinetic? Yes. Yeah, does he have potential? No, because no, he's on the zero point. So what we're left with is this. Potential of gravity that he starts with minus the first non-conservative work minus the second non-conservative work. That's going to equal kinetic final. Okay, so now what you do is you plug in your equations. So what's the equation for potential of gravity? 
MGH. Okay, now, what can we say about the first non-conservative work? What's, what's the equation for work? Work equals force times displacement. And remember, whenever you use whenever you use this equation, the force and the displacement must be what? Parallel. Hey, is the 50 newtons parallel to the 800? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So this is gonna. I'm just gonna put numbers in right now to keep it straight. So that's gonna be 50 newtons. And then how far does that act for? 800 meters. Okay, then minus, now this guy here, 3600 times 200, right? That's he, he acts for 200 meters. Okay, and then this is going to equal 1 half mv squared. What's the only thing missing in this equation? Velocity. Velocity. The only thing missing in that equation is velocity. We have we have everything else. Okay. So I'm kind of out of room here. Should I solve the algebra? Yeah. Here, let me shrink this and I'll solve the algebra. Okay, so the algebra from here, we're solving for V. So this is going to be vol velocity is going to be equal to 2 times uh, MGH minus, that's going to be 40,000 joules minus, what's 3,600 times 200. Uh, 720,000 joules uh, and then divided by M take the square root okay so then all you got to do now is punch in punch in for MGH when you do this you're gonna get uh, 24.5 Okay, does that make sense? Okay, now I want to skip to part C. So I'm going to revert this. Okay, so now we're going to focus here on part C. Part B, you guys, if we have time, I'll show you how to answer part B. Uh, I figured out what I did is I made an assumption, which is why I don't like part B. I don't like problems where kids have to assume. So the assumption is, is that when he hits the ground, he bends his legs and he stops himself, I said half a meter. So right, he hits the ground, because when you hit the ground, are you just gonna be like, with your legs unbent? Or are you gonna bend your legs? Bend You'll bend your legs. So say that his stopping distance is half a meter. If you make that assumption, the force that his body would experience is, uh, well, in pounds, it's about, it's almost 11,000 pounds of force. It's like being hit by 11,000 pounds. Is that going to hurt you? Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna, your bones are going to break. Yeah, if you hit the ground that hard. Okay, so part B, I figured out that, you know, that's the equivalent of being nailed with 11,000 pounds of force. Okay, that's a lot. So he's not going to survive this. Okay, part C. At what height should the parachute be opened so that his final speed is 5 meter per second? So now things change up here. So for starters, what you got to do is you got to go, all right, uh, what are we going to do to this 200 right here? This 200 is going to become what? X, that's our very, that's what we're looking for. And then this 800 is going to become what? A thousand minus X, okay? Now let's set up our equations. So again, the main idea here is mechanical energy initial. It's going to be minus work one, minus work two. This, guy, this force right here we're calling force one. This one right here is force two. Uh, and then this is going to equal mechanical final. So again, three types of mechanicals. Kinetic initial, gravity initial, spring initial. Now, 
let's just for now let's go work one minus work two and then that's going to equal kinetic final gravity final spring final okay does this problem have any springs no so cancel the springs out no springs uh, does he start with kinetic nope doesn't start with kinetic does he start with potential of gravity yeah because he's above the zero point okay does he end with kinetic yeah. Does he end with potential of gravity? No, because our zero point's down here. Oh, and by the way, we know right before he hits, the problem tells us his velocity, right? We want, we want V final to be 5, right here. It says 5 meter per second. Okay, so let's plug in. So what we're left with is we're left with potential of gravity initial minus work non-conservative 1 minus work non-conservative 2 equals kinetic final. All right, what's the equation for potential of gravity? MGH, okay. What can we say about work one? The work done by this force here, it's gonna be what? 50 Newtons times what? A thousand minus X, right? Force times displacement, okay? Minus, now what can we say about work two? 3,600 times x. And then this is going to equal 1 half mv squared. What's the only thing missing in this equation? x. The only thing that you don't have is x. And you know what, guys? You can do this algebra. You know, m is 80, g is 9.8, h is 1,000, m is 80. You can solve this for x. You're going to have to distribute right there, but uh, x comes out to be about 206 meters, which is interesting, guys. How far was it before? 200. So he just opened, he pulled the parachute six meters earlier, and that slowed him down enough to where he could survive. Six <coughs> meters, dude. That's like, you know, a little taller than the ceiling. Maybe like to the top of the building. I don't know. It's six meters, like six of these. Okay, so let's go back to part B. Is everybody good here? So part B, here's what I did. Will the guy survive or is he going to be hurt? Look, what I did, so, he, so for, uh, for the first part, what was, his, what was his velocity right when he hit the ground? He's, he's moving at 24.5 meter per second. After he hits the ground, what's his velocity? Zero, right? So this is going to be V initial, that's V final. What I did is I said, look, let's assume that he stops in half a meter. Like he bends his knees and he stops in half a meter. Okay, this is enough to find the acceleration. You go VF squared equals V initial squared plus 2AX. V final is zero. So his acceleration is negative V initial squared over X. So that's negative 24.5 over a distance of 0.5 meters. So this comes out as being 600 meter per second squared. All right, so if that's his acceleration, what is the net force that he would experience? Well, MA, so you go F net equals MA. So his mass is 80, his acceleration is 600. Guys, that would be a net force on his body of about 48,000 newtons. Which if you convert that to pounds, it's pretty much about 11,000 pounds. So guys, if you got hit with 11,000 pounds of force, like, hey, if I sat on you, how much force would that be? 200 pounds. How about if I had an elephant sit on you? You're, gonna, you're not going to do well. 